Hi, my name is Jasper and welcome back to the channel. In case you're new here, I'm an entrepreneur and remote marketing consultant and in this video I want to talk about the Remarkable 2. I picked up the Remarkable 2 in the beginning of this year, I think in February. So I've been using it for a couple of months now and I thought this was a great time to do a review about Remarkable 2 and go over the things that I love about this device, but also the things where I think there is some room for improvements. So the first thing that I want to get out of the way is the Remarkable 2 is an entirely different device than an iPad Pro, which I also own. And this is something that I will clarify along the way. So first, let's start with the different use cases I have for this device. First of all, I take notes on it. It's really nice to take notes on. It has some kind of like paper feel when you're writing on it. There's not a lot of lag when you're writing on the device, which is really nice. And also, and this is one of the main selling points, which I go into a bit deeper further on in the video, and that's that the Remarkable 2 is distraction free. The second thing that I use the Remarkable for is to read articles. So on my laptop, I have the Chrome extension, Remarkable's Chrome extension installed. And this allows me that when I come across a blog post, for example, during the day, I can easily add this to my Remarkable to read it later on the device. This comes really in handy for my evening routine, something that I will get into as well. The third thing that I use it for is to read and annotate bigger documents. So if I have larger PDFs, multiple pages that I need to read, and review, the Remarkable is perfect for this. Again, for the distraction-free part of it, but also to have a paper feel like and something easy to send out your notes after you're done reviewing the documents. And then last but not least, I also use it to read books, but unfortunately, there aren't a lot of books that you can really have available on this device. As of the recording of this video, the Remarkable 2 only works with DRM free books. I hope this is something that they will change soon because it would be great if I could read more books on this device. I really think that the size of this device, which is a bit bigger than a Kindle, is really great for reading books. Now, as I said earlier, the main reason, the main selling point that they have for the Remarkable 2 is it being a distraction-free device, which is great and which is also the main reason why I bought the device in the first place. Now, let me explain. If I'm working on my iPad, it's very easy for me to have access to the internet, to be distracted by a notification. I know I can put on Do Not Disturb, but for notifications this will work, but for the other things not so much. Whereas the Remarkable 2 basically only has an internet connection to sync documents with your computer. So it doesn't have an internet browser, it doesn't have any notifications, it doesn't have Android. If you are reading something on this device, it's basically more or less the same than if you are just holding a piece of paper and reading something on there. Now, the display of the device uses something called e-ink. And this also makes it a really great device to work on in direct sunlight. When I was traveling in Portugal in the beginning of this year, and also the time when I picked up this device, I used it multiple times while working outside in direct sunlight, and it works perfectly. It's basically more or less the same than if you're reading on a paper. Note to build further on this feature of the device using e-ink. This also makes it a great device for incorporating in your evening routine. I don't know about you, but in the evening, I like to minimize my screen time before I go to bed. But because the Remarkable uses e-ink, I can still use the device right before bed to, for example, read through an article that I saved during the day or to prepare for the day ahead. For this last part, Remarkable also offers some great templates within the device. This includes templates for your week planning and your day planning, along a lot of other templates as well. Another big advantage of the usage of e-ink is that the battery life on this device is amazing. I recharge it, I think, every two weeks, maybe every month now. This will really depend on the, the amount of time that you will use the device, but in general, I only recharge it every other week, for example. So the battery life on this device is really great. Now, one last thing that I really like about this device and that I didn't really expect in the beginning is that it also gets regular updates and it really gets better to use. 
I didn't really expect this because in comparison to an iPad for example, it has a much smaller user base and usually these devices get less updates over time. But so far I would say that I get on average one update a month and the experience of the device really improves with every update. This is something I really like. That being said, let's get into a couple of the improvements. First improvement being the companion apps that come with the device. So when you're using the iOS app, the iPadOS app, the Mac app, these apps will allow you to access the files that you have on your Remarkable. Now, these apps feel really unnative to me. So they try to more or less mimic the experience that you have on the Remarkable itself, but because these are different devices, it feels a bit off to me. On the Remarkable itself, it works great because you have the e-ink and it's like a different experience to use. But on my iOS device or on my Mac, I really would like the experience that I'm used to on these devices. And then the second improvement, and this is something that I already talked about before, that is that it only allows you to read DRM-free books right now. These are two things that I really would like to see change in the future and then this would be an even more amazing device and I can recommend it to even more people to actually use it. Now, do you yourself see a use case for this device? Or would you much rather just keep it with one device, like for example an iPad or an iPad Pro, and try to be more disciplined to not get distracted while using that device? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel for weekly new videos each Wednesday, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!